The third step is to add attributes. Now, if you have a conceptual database design that has the attributes, this step is partially done for you, be a little easier to do. In this particular case, I don't. So I'll have to go back to the scenario and make sure that I can look through it and find all the details that I need to be able to do this. So a bank has users who are bank employees or customers. So that identifies two different types of customers. So I'm gonna add that as an entity so we can record what type they are. Uh, all users have a unique ID to identify them, so I'm going to add that, and I'll just call it a user ID. And then this tells us some of the accessibility and constraint issues that they have, but none of those are attributes. If I go down here, each user, we maintain several pieces of information, and here's where we get these descriptive pieces of information that will become attributes. First name, last name, password, so now notice how I'm running out of space. So the table just by default gives me three. Now you can have as many as I want. And the way that I get more is if you highlight one, you can just do control D and it will duplicate and create another one. So I'll do that a few times. I don't know exactly how many I need, but that'll get me started. I know I need a last name uh, and I need a password. Two verification questions and answers. So this is exactly two, so I can create attributes for each individual one, and that's how I'm going to do this one. So I'm going to do question one and answer one, question two and answer two. And then they also have an email address and one or more phone, and one or more phone numbers. So here's an email address and one or more phone numbers, and this concept of one or more indicates that this is a multivaried attribute, and that's something that we picked up in our original, in our conceptual design, and identified it, that it would be a multi-valued attribute, and so here we have it. We've created another table for it, and so it's not, it's not an attribute here. It looks like I ended up with one too many, so I can simply get rid of that last one. And this little line here, if I do that and I just push the down arrow, I can move it to the bottom. All right, so there's the user. There's uh, two types of customers, standard and premium. All customers must be designated one of two types. Okay, now I'm in trouble. I use type up here to mean bank employee or customer, and now I have a type for standard and premium. So I'm going to have to name them more specifically, so I'm going to use user type up here to say what type of user they are. Remember that one I got rid of, now I get it added again. And here we're going to have customer type. And separate those two to individual types. Okay, so that adds that one. And each customer can have multiple bank accounts. That's multiplicity detail and accessibility and constraint. Okay, and now there are two types of bank accounts, savings and checking. So I can go into account and add a type. Or each account has a unique 10 digit account number. And one or more transactions, and here we see those transactions. It also has a main branch, a service fee, and a calculated balance. Now when you have a calculated value, it needs to be started with a slash. So the balance is calculated, and so we, we put a slash in front of it to indicate it that this is calculated attribute. Okay, and then we just keep looking. A branch has a branch number, a manager. That manager is a bank employee. It has a street address, a city, and a state. So there's lots of different ways to handle addresses and lots of discussion about it and the bottom line is it depends whether you keep them you know do you keep them in a separate table or an individual table or how what kind of details do you keep and it really depends on the system itself and so that's a decision that isn't a blanket decision in our case we won't have duplicates and we will not have thousands of them so keeping them just as atomic uh, attributes right inside the branch will work good 
in this particular system. There are three types of transactions, withdrawal, a deposit, and a payment. Again, we need to specify a type. And an, it has an account, an amount, and a date. Okay, these have to do with our relationships with accounts and, and transactions. So we don't have anything there that we need to worry about. All right, so there we've listed, oh, in phone number we don't have anything. Phone number would have the attribute phone number. Okay, and because that's the attribute we pulled out of user that's the multi-valued attribute, that's what we'll be storing in each one of these records is a phone number. So I want to be able to be sure and put that there. And then any ones that are not being used, we can simply get rid of those rows like that. User account, uh, we'll be moving some there as we handle this associative table, this associative entity. We'll be adding those later, and all the rest now have all of the attributes that we need. And that finishes up step three.